we're talking about the physics of tennis. I'm a physics professor and also tennis player and inventor. I figured if I'm going to be playing tennis, I want to enhance my game. I've got a really big serve, mostly because I've got good mechanics. I'm a big left-hand serve, pretty good right-hand serve. Yes, I'm an ambidextrous player. I actually play a game called Two Racket Tennis, and I'm sure in another segment I'll talk about that. Uh, this is for the conventional player. So one of the things I did was invent something called the whip grip. Here's your standard tennis racket, and you've got something called the butt cap at the end. I started playing with the conventional racket, and my hand would be here, and here's the butt cap, and I'm going to you know, do my conventional swinging and so on, backhand, forehand, whether it's right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't really matter. But then I want to go to my serve. Of course, the serve, you're supposed to be in control, all right? So why not enjoy the serve and try to get as many free points as possible? So here I am doing the serving, and I'm saying, how can I make my serve faster? Maybe if I loosen up the, the wrist, the forearm, try to put my hand down on the butt cap. So I've got the butt cap pretty much in the center of my, or in the palm of my hand, and I'm getting more velocity, higher velocity, also better slice across the ball for the top spin that I talked about in other segments. You want the Magnus Force driving the ball into the service box. But, uh, after a couple of hours of this, my palm is killing me, continued to do it, ripped a hole of skin out of the palm. Not a good idea. Get rid of the butt cap. Got rid of the butt cap. What are you going to do? Well, you can rewrap it. You don't really need this butt cap. And now you can have a comfortable grip here. I call this the whip grip or rip, whip grip one, all right, where you just simply take the butt cap off and rewrap it maybe put a little extra wrap on the end, and you're going to get an ex extended uh, service motion because this wrist is loosened up. Then I said, well, maybe I can put a little piece of rubber on the end, which is what I have here, kind of give it a little more flexibility. Found out that worked well, too. I don't really need this all of the time. I kind of like it just without the butt cap. So again, whip grip number two, little rubbery piece at the end. Other friends of mine really like this, all right? They think it's very comfortable and they play with it all of the time. They don't need the, the crazy butt cap. Again, it's not, the point is not to extend the length of the handle. That has nothing to do with it. You can cut it off anywhere along here and put this uh, rubbery piece on. So it's not to extend the length of the racket, <clears throat> which has certain specifications for, for tournament play. So we're not really trying to outdo any of that. We just simply want to have a flexible grip. So if you wanted to put this on here, you've got whip grip number two. All right. So this is very useful for the serve. So let's go back to the wrist. Here I have one of uh, the rackets that I broke. After, you know, I told you I've got a big serve. Broke this one right off here. So here's my whip grip. What am I talking about? Whip grip? Well, Let's take a look at a whip, all right? Here's my whip. You want to have a service motion that has as much power as possible. You want as much flexibility in the wrist. When I crack the whip, and whether you want to believe me or not, you can crack a whip and break the sound barrier. Yes, the speed of sound. So it's, it's possible with the whip. This is a, just a cheapo whip, but you can see the motion of the whip. Well, I guess I did kind of make a cracking sound there. So I think that will be <laughs> good enough for that. Usually I don't get it to work so well. But you can try just a belt like this. But the point of the story is you want flexibility in your service motion, OK? You want to have a longer service motion and also have this nice flexibility for twofold, right? One for power, also for flexibility and getting slice on the ball. So with this grip in mind, let's take a look. I don't need the full racket to do this. What's actually happening in the wrist? I'm not sure if here, let's try it this way. If I have a conventional grip, meaning I'm going to have the butt cap down here, how far down can I get this to go with my hand? Well, about right here, right? So I'm limited in terms of how far I can actually extend. Once I've got my hand down here, look what happens. You see that? You get a better extension. 
And this is added power, all right? So let's go back. Here I am, conventional grip, all right? You see? See where I am here? I'll do it with a regular racket, too. And then with the whip grip, I get this further pronation. So whether it's supination or pronation, here's your traditional restriction, all right, on a conventional grip, butt cap on the end. Now you're way down the end with the whip grip. Look what happens. You see this? Better pronation, whether I'm turning my hand this way or whether I'm coming across the ball this way, I get the enhanced whip-like effect, and it works. So go out on the tennis court. If you want to just do like I said, take the butt cap off and rewrap the end, wonderful. If you want to put some kind of a comfortable rubbery portion on the end, some people really like that. Again, the importance is not to extend the length of the handle. You can do this anywhere on the handle, but you're getting this whip-like effect. And I guarantee you'll put miles per hour on your serve, and also you'll have less problems with your elbow. I've been hitting the ball really hard now for the past two years and don't have a lot of elbow problems, so enjoy the whip grip. Take care. Bye for now.